mountainview.gov slash EPC underscore speakers. Emails and voicemail messages received by 5 p.m. today were forwarded to the EPC. All votes will be taken by roll call vote. I will now ask the EPC clerk to proceed with the roll call. Clerk Penelier. Commissioner Capriles? Here. Commissioner Dempsey? Here. Commissioner Haymeyer? Here. Commissioner Yin? Here. Commissioner Nunes? Here. Vice Chair Lowe? Um, I think Vice Chair Lowe is uh, excused. Okay, she's excused. And then Chair Cranston? Here. Yes, so uh, to the uh, Vice Chair Lowe um, is absent and General Counsel has um, determined that that is an excused absence. I'd also like to welcome to his first meeting on this side of the of the, of the, of the bench, um, Commissioner Nunez, who uh, was recently appointed, appointed, I think actually just yesterday, to take over the position uh, that uh, Commissioner Smeezing uh, vacated this summer. So welcome, uh, Commissioner Nunez. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> item number three on the agenda is the meeting minutes. Um, the, we will be reviewing the minutes from the August 18th, 2021 and the October 21st, 2021 meeting. Um, are there any feedback from the commissioners on changes or edits that are, that are needed for the, uh, the minutes? None. Um, open up for public comment. Would any member of the public like to comment? Uh, that's who's on the line would like to comment on the meeting minutes. If so, please click the raise hand button in Zoom or press star nine on your phone. Phone users can mute and unmute themselves with star six. EPC clerk will start the timer and let you know when your time is up. Um, clerk Pellinger, any one machine to speak on the minutes? Um, I'm seeing no one. Okay. Yeah. And we'll bring it back to the commission. Um, do I have a motion to uh, regarding any minutes? Uh, Commissioner Hammer. Sure, I move to adopt the meeting minutes from August 18th and October 20th, 2021 as submitted by staff. And uh, Second. Commissioner Capellas. Commissioner Capellas. I, I second that motion. All right, um, Commissioner Pelliar, can you take the roll, please? Not working. Yep, Chair can Cranston, you just before before we vote, I think um, for our new Commissioner Nunez, he can still vote um, even if he wasn't present, right? I forget that's, or if you wish, you, you're also able to recruit, recuse yourself, I believe. Yeah, either and vote or, or abstain, uh, either or accuse. So can you take the roll call vote? Kreisha, you need to call each commissioner's name. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, Commissioner Haymeyer? Aye. Commissioner Capriles? Aye. Commissioner Dempsey? Aye. Commissioner Yin? Aye. Um, Commissioner Nunes? I'll abstain. And Chair Cranston? Aye. So it seems like motion passes. With that, we will move on to item number four. This section of the agenda is a portion of the meeting reserved for persons wishing to speak on and to address the EPC on any matter that is not on the agenda. Speakers are allowed to speak on any topic for up to three minutes during this section. State law prohibits the commission from acting on any non-agenda items. Would any member of the public on the line like to provide comment on a non-agendized item? If so, please click the raise hand button in Zoom or star nine on your phone. Phone users can mute and unmute themselves with star six. 
the peace street clerk will start the timer and let you know when your time is up clerk can we are uh, anyone wishing to speak on this in this section yeah um i'm seeing no one um just a reminder you can click the raise hand button no i don't see anyone okay. we'll bring it back to the commission for item number five a study session on the Google North Bay Shore Master Plan. Uh, we'll start with a presentation by uh, project planner Dinah Petroli and planning manager and zoning administrator Stephanie Williams. Dinah? Thank you, uh, Chair and members of the commission. I'm going to start my presentation. Um, uh -huh. um, sorry, Chair Cranston, I think someone just raised their hand. For oral communications. Um, I guess Sandy, I think we close that. Or is it? Is this? Is this a commercial? Can we just pretend that the person wants, that's on the phone wants to speak on a non agenda item versus this particular topic? If it's this particular topic, please bring your hand down for now and then we'll come back to it later. If it's If it's just for general communications, Please go ahead and leave your hand up. You'll give him a few seconds. It looks like it's a caller on the line. Um, yes, and they're still their hand is still up. So I'm gonna allow the caller to talk. Is that the the chair can allow the the um, the return to oral communications if you would like. Okay. If, there's, if there's no objection, we'll return to oral communications. Okay. Okay. Um, one second. Um, let me get my timer up. We have three minutes to talk. Okay. And then um, I'm unmuting you now. And um, whoever's the caller, I'm requesting that you be unmuted. Star six. Hello. Yep. Ken. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So uh, my name is Russ Cashin, and I'm on a local 104 over here in San Jose in the Bay Area. We cover a lot of California. I moved here 20 years ago, and uh, I was able to have a nice affordable life here in Mountain View through the skilled training I had through U local union 104. We also have done a lot of work for Google projects, Facebook, and a lot of other high tech companies over here in the Bay area. Uh, we, we provide skilled labor that takes five years of training. And I'm speaking to you tonight to make sure young people from Mountain View will be able to have the same opportunity and learn a trade as I do so they can afford to live here some of you might remember that a few years back, my fellow construction workers participated in a public hearings on North Bayshore, Bayshore Precise Plan. As a result of our testimony, the city council inserted local higher policy, which I think is a great thing because that provides a lot of opportunity locally and it keeps the money circulating in the area. The city council residents of Mountain View understood the city had the opportunity to rebuild North Bay Shore and train the next generation of skilled construction workers. By ensuring training opportunities and jobs for the local workforce with, mass, with Google Master Plan, we can now make sure the goals set by the council actually materialize. But Google's draft master plan is silent on the city policy. I asked the commission to recommend, recommend to the city council that this omission be corrected. Please ensure the Google, that Google Master's plan includes language that reflects the city's stated local hire policy. That's very important to keep the money in the area. The building trades plan to meet with Google and lead lease to discuss how their master plan will ensure training and employment opportunities for the local workforce and create jobs that pay family supporting wages. Thank 
Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Um, sorry. All right, you're you're sir, you're you're finished, or I think we're you're close to your time, your three minute time. So I think. It, uh, am I still there? Yes. I about think another twenty presents, seconds. I think this presents a great opportunity for the next generation coming up, especially for the local environment. You know, these, these people that are coming in the trades and these young kids, they, they're going to be skilled laborers, and, the, and they do, we do precision work. And I have been for 20 years, and we are very familiar with the area, and there, there are really no complaints with any of the contracts that Local 104 provides. So right. uh, thank you. I think thank you, sir. Be doing. Your, uh, your uh, time is up. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. So just for clarification to the attendees, we are we have not yet moved into the, into input on the Google Master Plan. We're we're in the section talking about items that are not related to the Google Master Plan. If you have something that is not related to the Google Master Plan, please raise your hand. If it's related to the Google Master Plan, please we'll, we'll wait until we get to that section, and there'll be plenty of opportunity for you to speak at that time. So uh, I, I think we I think I think we'll move um, we'll move on move back to agenda item five. Um, uh, Chair Cranston, there's two more um, people from the attendee list that have raised their hands. Um, I'm not sure if they're for the. I, I guess one be absolute, so Michelle and Alex B. We we are not at this point taking feedback on the Google Master Plan yet. We will in a few minutes. So please hold on, and you'll be more than you'll be able to to bring up your comments and questions at that time. You'll have plenty of opportunity. Okay. So we'll move back to item number five, and um, Diana, you're on. I'm not hearing you. Thank you, Chair and the Commission. Um, my name is Diana Pancholi, Senior Planner with the City's Planning Division. And I have with me tonight Stephanie Williams, our current Planning Manager and Zoning Administrator. The item um, uh, that EPC is reviewing tonight at the study session is on Google North Bay Shore Master Plan. And staff presentation tonight is going to be focused to provide um, introduction to the master plan and also receive uh, input on key aspects to guide the future review of the master plan further. Starting with the location, the master plan area is located around Shoreline Boulevard, north of uh, Highway 101 in North Bay Shore Precise Plan area. The master plan spans across 127 acres uh, shown in yellow boundary in the on your screen right here. The project area also includes a portion of a gateway master plan. The current project site is surrounded by uh, existing suburban office development, commercial development, and uh, another specific thing is uh, uh, existing mobile home park to the south of the shoreline neighborhood as proposed in the master plan. Before I dive into the details, I just wanted to clarify the regulatory context of the master plan. The, so the North Bay Shore Precise Plan uh, sets the tone for the development framework in the entire area of the Precise Plan in terms of development standards and the processes. And the master plan will come under and it fits uh, within the precise plan that allows the developers to take all the precise plan requirements and uh, lay it out to meet their needs while complying with the precise plan. Master plan really focuses on the major components of the development, such as the location of the land use, circulation, parking, et cetera. So if a master plan is approved, uh, you know, there will be subsequent permits for individual building developments that will be needed um, as part of the master plan implementation. 
And um, now I'll dive deep into, you know, what have we done so far. So in terms of uh, prior meetings, earlier this year, City Council at a public hearing approved requalification of 1.3 million square foot of non-residential um, floor area ratio to Google with, um, you know, it was subject to around 42 million in community benefits. At the same meeting in a study session, council also provided input on Google's preliminary master plan proposal. In general, city council was supportive of the, of the proposal with some comments about land use distribution, uh, layout, location, uh, dedication of open space for school, and also um, in balancing out some of the land use distribution within the character areas and also sharing district parking facilities with other non-Google um, property owners. Following uh, the city council direction, uh, Google has refined their proposal and submitted a formal master plan in September earlier this year. Google is proposing to demolish all the existing uh, buildings except one in the master plan area to redevelop it with 1.3 million square foot of net new office buildings, 1.8 uh, million square foot of existing office rebuilt, around 7,000 affordable units, including 20% uh, affordable housing units, uh, 31 acres of uh, open space, and 2,999,000 mm -hmm. square foot of active uses and community spaces as well. Proposal will also include district parking facilities, district utilities, and a network of new and uh, realigned street networks as well. The maximum master plan proposal is generally consistent with the uh, city's general plan and the three character areas of the North Bay Show precise plan area as well. This includes integrated land uses, district facilities, improvement to the public open space and maintaining sensitive habitat in the area as well. A little bit regarding the affordable housing proposal of the project, the applicant is proposing 20% uh, affordable housing to meet the North Bay Shore Precise Plan affordable housing guidelines. This includes 50% land dedication, 15% units through land dedication, and 5% uh, units through inclusionary housing uh, units. The current BMR proposal requires further refinement uh, and details as well, such as the unit size, uh, unit mix, etc. And staff will continue to work with the applicant on refining this proposal, as well as, well as conduct a feasibility study on this as well. In terms of uh, public open space and open space in general, the uh, proposal is a network of public uh, parks and open spaces. Uh, this is distributed throughout the master plan and includes 12 distinct open spaces which accounts for 19 acres of public park space and 12 acres of privately owned publicly accessible areas. The estimated required parkland for the development uh, in the master plan is 33.6 acres and around 300 or 351 million in, in new fees. Overall, Google's intent with this um, parks and open space strategy is to meet the parkland obligation through a combination of land dedication, um, parkland credit for the POPAs, which are privately owned publicly accessible areas, and payment of the in-lieu fees as well. City staff is generally supportive of the identified parklands and open space areas and refinements to the location size and you know, public courses, uh, POPA areas will continue to be done through the review process. It should be noted that um, based on the previous city council direction at the earlier study session, the applicant has um, refined the mat formal master plan uh, as part of the Can't hear you. I lost you, Dana. Losing audio. Can you hear me now? 
Yep. Yep. Okay. yep. Sorry, I'm at the city hall. Poor network. Um, I will restart it again. Uh, okay. So I'm just going to cover the last part of the open space. So at the previous city council meeting at, uh, in March earlier this year, city council suggested the applicant to refine their proposal to dedicate a four acre parcel, which was previously um, proposed to be dedicated to the school, Mountain View Wisman School District, that it should be dedicated to the city. And that's what is included as the shoreboard yards in the open, uh, open space uh, and park strategy here. A little bit about district parking proposal. Uh, in compliance with the North Bay Show Precise Plan, the proposal includes shared parking facilities for office, residential uses, and um, district parking approach to help manage parking demand in the Precise Plan. This has been an important aspect of the, of the North Bay Show Precise Plan throughout. The proposal includes a district serving residential parking garage in each of the neighborhoods to support residential parking. Uh, of the total office parking, 10% will be provided on site and 90% of the office parking will be accommodated in three district parking garages, including a district office parking garage at uh, Lot C at the Shoreline Amphitheater. Moving on to the construction phasing plan, uh, Google is requesting up to 30 years to construct a master plan in eight phases. The proposed uh, phasing pattern allows Google to rebuild the existing office square footage to be demolished and make space for new residential development in the area. Currently, as proposed, 42% of the residential units will be provided in the first two phases of the development, and the remaining 58% will be provided in the last four phases of the development. About 80% of the dedication of parkland is also proposed to be provided by uh, first two phases as proposed in this construction phasing. Since 1970, um, North Bayshore has been suburban office park um, with uh, heavily landscaped meandering uh, paths shielded from public view by berms and street trees. But when we adopted the North Bay Show Precise Plan, we envisioned a transformation in land use and the overall area. Um, you know, it's going to create integrated street network that supports the new supports the new land use mix and integration of the land uses uh, in the area with multimodal transportation improvements. Google's master plan proposal complies with the conceptual street network as proposed in the master plan as well. But in order to implement this, um, this transformation and implement the precise plan um, guidance, uh, you know, it will require us to uh, remove existing trees and replanting of new street trees and landscaping that promote the biodiversity goals of the precise plan. The goal of increasing biodiversity uh, is, uh, is an important goal in the Council's fiscal year 2021 and 2023 strategic priorities. So in order to implement this, um, staff um, notes that you know, it will necessitate design of street infrastructure, including sidewalks, landscaping, and other modes of uh, transportation, potential vacation of existing uh, easements and dedication of new easements, and also removal of existing trees and uh, re replacement with new street trees to meet with the biodiversity goals of the precise plan. This brings me to the next topic on uh, community benefits. In accordance with the precise plan uh, bonus FAR standards, applicant is required to provide community benefits above and uh, for the additional bonus FAR um, that they are uh, proposing. At the March uh, study session earlier this year, City Council did approve requalification of um, uh, non-residential office FAR to Google, subject to a minimum 42 million in community benefits. And in accordance to that, Google is proposing uh, to provide uh, community benefits, such as you know affordable housing, 15% uh, through land dedication, green building, and site design measures. In addition to that, Google is also uh, proposing to provide monetary contribution of 35 million towards Charleston 
Transit Corridor Phase 2 and 3 construction, which is a priority transportation improvement identified in the precise plan, and around 7 million contribution towards the delivery of EcoGem open space as proposed in the Master Plan's open space strategy. So while Google's proposal for community benefits is in alignment with what was uh, reviewed by City Council at the study session earlier, um, staff will be working with a consultant in order to prepare an economic analysis to evaluate the community benefit proposal, um, which is being presented right now. So this brings me to the first question for EPC tonight. If EPC have any additional input regarding land use, affordable housing, parks and open space, district parking, construction, phasing, and implementation of the complete street network. Another, you know, trees are an important part of the precise plan. The master plan has approximately 372 trees, with about 26% of the trees in the existing street right of way and built to area. Over 40% of the existing trees are in poor health, and a significant percentage of these trees are not native to the area and not suitable for the local climate as well. Considering the importance of biodiversity and trees in our community um, and in compliance with achieving the vision of North Bay Show Precise Plan um, of newly created neighborhoods and street infrastructure, Google is preparing uh, to implement a plan to to replace the existing trees with new trees, which will be more suitable uh, to the local climate, contribute towards the biodiversity goals. I have a few numbers in here um, shown on the screen, uh, which shows you know uh, total number of trees that will be removed in the street um, right of ways and built to areas uh, as proposed to meet the North Bay Show Precise Plan um, goals and vision. So in order to review this proposal, staff has prepared a framework on, you know, how are we going to review this? And the framework is going to emphasize on uh, retaining and integrating existing healthy trees in the plan, explore opportunities to transplant healthy trees, which are suitable to the local climate when we are reviewing the site design for individual sites, and also emphasize on the tree replacements, which will contribute towards the tree canopy and overall biodiversity goals. So that takes me to the second question for EPC tonight. If EPC supports the proposed framework of tree removal and replacement necessary for implementation of the master plan consistent with the precise plan vision. Moving on, um, this is going to be the last topic for EPC question. Um, you know, following the master plan, a plan permit will be required to develop individual parcels associated with the master plan. The precise plan uh, prescribes the city council shall determine at the time of master plan approval, uh, the subsequent development review process for planned community permits as associated with the approved master plan. Google is proposing a streamlined review process for future permits wherein based on the scale and size of the project, the project will be reviewed by staff and DRC, and a final decision will be made by the zoning administrator at a public hearing. Staff does believe that this shorter and streamlined approach uh, for review is suitable for the master plan uh, because majority of the components of development have been or would be worked out under the master plan itself and this would have involved input from all our decision makers, our community as well. And the future permits could be streamlined to focus on verifying their compliance with the, um, with the master plan itself. So that brings me to my third question, if EPC support the proposed streamlined development review process. Lastly, for EPC's information only, Applicant is requesting a development agreement for a 30 year term in tandem with the master plan uh, itself. Essentially, the development agreement will lock in certain development rights. The city does expect some public benefits to be provided the development agreement, which are going to be above and beyond the community benefits to be provided as part of the bonus FAR. 
Google's proposed uh, development agreement public benefits includes a list of public benefits amounting to around 14.5 million through in-kind improvements by the project sponsor and funding to the city, along with 5% inclusionary affordable housing. This will be further refined uh, as the project review will take, um, um, you know, um, moves forward and will be presented to the city council at the time of final entitlement. As a next step following tonight's EPC um, study session, the EPC feedback will be provided to the city council at a study session tentatively scheduled on December 14th, 2021. Uh, after which we'll be beginning with our environmental review process, um, move forward with development review committee review process in spring 2022, continue gathering community uh, input through various outreach meetings. And at the very end, I just wanted to remind everyone, we do have a project webpage on our uh, city's website. Uh, for all the interested parties who would like to get further information on the project status update or notifications on future meetings, um, please visit the project webpage uh, and sign up for future notifications. So this brings me, um, you know, to the end of my staff presentation. Staff is present here tonight if you have any further questions. And I would also like to um, note that Jeff Rosea from uh, representing Google is present here tonight who will be presenting a brief presentation uh, for the applicant. Thank you. Okay. Um, so can we get Jeff on? Good evening. Hello, everybody. Okay. So we can, uh, allow you to give 10 minutes to uh, to go through your presentation, please. Let me pull my screen up here. And one moment, let me put the timer on as well. Okay. Uh, let's Sorry, I got to find my second screen here. Yeah, we may need to minimize the timer to be able to see his slides. Okay, there we go. We'll just, we um, yeah, so Krishna, I don't want you just, if you can call it like maybe a, a two minute, one minute as it gets close. Thanks. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. I, I should I should finish in plenty of time, so I think we'll be okay in that regard. Um, but thank you for having us here tonight, uh, Diana. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, hopefully, I, I won't duplicate uh, very much of that. But um, anyway, good evening, uh, Chair Cranston and Commissioners. I, I want to start off by by thanking you for having us here tonight. Um, we're really excited to provide an overview of our project in North Bayshore and why we've been working with the city on this project for many years now. This is the first time we're formally presenting to the EPC. Um, so on that note, I'd also like to thank staff for their great efforts over the last few years working with us. Um, it, it's, been, it's been a real pleasure, honestly. Um, as the lead urban planner for Google, I'm really proud to be able to present tonight on how we plan to deliver on the vision of the North Bay Shore Precise Plan. In my 10 years of working with and for Google now, I've been able to watch Google evolve and grow as a company and a landowner. There's, there's really no doubt that we're part of the Mountain View community. We're in it for the long haul and we're invested in the city's success, health and well-being. As the commission knows, uh, back in 2017, the city council supported by the community made the really astute decision to amend the North Bay Shore Precise Plan to facilitate three complete neighborhoods. Uh, as, a, as a major landowner within these complete neighborhoods, we now have this opportunity and ability to deliver on many of the precise plan priorities. These include the continued evolution of North Bayshore from a car-centric, predominantly single-use destination to a vibrant mixed-use neighborhood that, are, that is really focused on people, innovation, ecology, and multimodal mobility. Most importantly, the precise plan seeks to deliver nearly 10,000 new homes in a region 
with undisputed pent up demand for housing. Google's committed to delivering up to about 7,000 of those new homes, including 20% as affordable units. This is equivalent to doubling the amount of affordable housing in Mountain View today. As Diana said, the plan also provides over 31 acres of publicly accessible open spaces, including expanded habitat for the existing eager hookery. We will also continue to invest and lead the way in mobility solutions, uh, prioritizing people over cars with every opportunity. So this includes delivering almost four miles of new pedestrian and bike paths, completing the green loop between Stevens Creek and Permanente Creek, implementing a really comprehensive transportation demand management plan, among other things. Our plan also provides much needed day-to-day -day retail, including a market, community spaces, as well as outdoor dining, entertainment, and opportunities for small and local businesses to grow within the district. And while all this and all of this will continue um, and, and have a legacy of being the center for innovation, employment, and learning, our project will be accompanied by the comprehensive community benefits package that Diana outlined, $35 million towards the Charleston Transit Corridor. Phase one just opened earlier this year, so this money will go towards phases two and three now. Uh, $7 million towards habitat um, restoration up at the EcoGem, 5% inclusionary affordable housing, public art program, and small business diversification program as well. In total, this is no small feat, and it will definitely take time to implement. Sustainability is really key to Google. It's really built into everything that we do. It's in our DNA and we strive to lead by example. We've committed to using up 100% carbon-free energy in the operations of all of our campuses by 2030. And we are already designing all electric office buildings here in the Bay Area. Earlier this year, uh, we announced our enhanced water stewardship commitment which means that Google will replenish 120% of the water we consume on average across our offices and data centers. In a time of drought, this is really critical for the area. And then as we look to the future, we're also exploring innovative district systems that will help reduce energy and water consumption in both the residential and commercial buildings that we want to build. But that vision of tomorrow starts with the North Bay Shore of today being predominantly single story office buildings surrounded by a sea of parking lots that really house, just do nothing but house cars. Our approach actually creates a layering of ingredients that will create a mix of land uses and experiences for employees, residents, and visitors, while also creating that walkable and connected neighborhood that's built uh, from an ecological framework. Our proposed open space network will create a spectrum of experiences. Along shoreline, we're able to create more urban conditions for walkability, social experiences, and vibrancy in the public area. The scale of the open spaces allows expansive neighborhood open spaces with active and passive recreational opportunities really designed for all ages. And then because of that scale, we're also able to build on the ecology that already exists at the retention basin and out at Stevens Creek with the addition of the shorebird wilds and the eco gem. As we look to the precise, to implement the precise plan, there are a great number of elements that need to be balanced. Our team, the city and the community have been looking at these elements and many more for several years now. No single element of the master plan can be looked at in isolation. Each one is a part of the larger transformational and sustainability story. One example of that that Diana mentioned being discussed tonight is our pr proposal for the tree replacement and mitigation strategy. In order to implement the precise plan's vision, a significant amount of trees will be removed and replaced with more diversity over the next couple decades and in many small phases. This affords the city and Google the opportunity to work together to create a really sophisticated approach to urban forest management at the district scale that will prioritize the long-term health and sustainability of North Bay Shore. As we plan ahead over the next 20 years, many of the redwoods within the master plan area will be replaced with a more diverse, more water sensitive and healthier ecosystem that's better suited for the new streetscape with wider sidewalks, cafe seating, storefronts and residential stoops that come closer to the street. 
This new ecosystem will also include the critically, critically important understory that is largely unable to grow in today's redwood forest. This will attract butterflies, allow pollinators to thrive, and help manage our stormwater more naturally. The design and implementation of this evolving urban forest has already begun with the Retention Basin and Charleston East projects. Additionally, we are growing thousands of trees on a farm so that the replacement trees and their canopies will be more mature at the time of planting. And finally, during this master plan process, we are also identifying those healthy existing trees that can remain as part of the complete neighborhoods. These tend to be at key corners along the green loop and in parks and open spaces. In the end, North Bayshore must evolve into the complete neighborhood as, the, as envisioned by the precise plan in order to deliver the much needed housing in Mountain View. In 2022, we'll continue to proactively listen and engage with the community, staff, council, and yourselves as we did you know, over the last year and adapt the plan to ensure the best outcome. The feedback we hear tonight will be considered as we look to resubmit our master plan next year. And again, want to thank staff for the review and responsiveness on the feedback received thus far from our, on our August submission. Two minutes left. Thank you. We are embracing both the complexity and the opportunity here in North Bayshore, and will continue to appreciate the special place as our first and long-term home. We believe in the value of, of people being immersed in nature, a strong community, and prioritizing health and well-being. So I want to thank you for your time tonight. Uh, I think Diana provided a lot of really great information. Hopefully, I added to that a little bit. Um, but when you, if you have more questions, uh, I'm joined by a, a number of my team members here who are all here to answer any questions that you may have. So thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, so we will next move to public comment. We can uh, get the board back. So in this section, um, would any member of the public on the line like to provide comment on this item? If so, please click the raise hand button in Zoom or press star nine on your phone. Phone users can mute and unmute themselves with star six. The EPC clerk will start the timer to let you know when your time is up. Um, clerk Panishar, can do we have uh, any speakers who would like to address the commission at this time? Yeah, we have nine speakers. Um, I can start with Ryan Jones. Um, it says Ryan Jones, you have an older version of Zoom. So um, if you could call in, <laughs> I can't click on you. So I'll move. Okay, so Ryan, um, I'd recommend calling in if you want to speak just because your Zoom's outdated. Um, the next person down the list is Erica Valentine. Uh, Erica, you should be able to talk. Um, just un unmute yourself, and then I'll start the clock. Hi, this is Erica. Thank you so much for your time tonight. I represent Local 393. We have two over 2,000 members in this area. We have over 100 members that actually live in Mountain View. I am calling in support of this project and I'm appreciative for Google for all of the work that they have done in the Bay Area. I'd like to urge Google to please consider local hiring to also continue with your relationship <laughs> to support apprenticeship and workforce development in this area, as well as a high quality project. Thank you for your time. And we hope that you will support local 393 workers in this area. Thank you. Uh, next speaker. Okay, um, Alex Mianush. Um, you should be able to talk now. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, Alex, I'm a plumber yep. with UA Local 393, a longtime resident of Mountain View. I support development that brings value to our community. 
We need more housing and master plan. This master plan promises 7,000 new units, including much needed affordable housing. Google has committed the commercial portion of this project will employ local construction workers and pay family supporting wages. And that is great news. We need to invest in the construction workforce. Uh, we need to train the next generation of skilled workers. It's not clear yet where the workforce will come from to build these thousands of homes. I hope Google and Lendlease step up to the plate on these jobs. And uh, we're just coming out of this pandemic and local workers are gonna need these jobs. The, the city's own precise plan for this area establishes local hire and training like our apprenticeship programs as goals for projects like this Google project. I ask that the Planning Commission ensure that Google adheres to this policy. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Um, next speaker, Shani Kleinhaus. Shani, you should be able to talk. Ms. Kleinhaus? Uh, we're not able to hear you, Ms. Kleinhaus. Uh, if you want to, we'll, we'll move to the next speaker. And if you want to check your audio, and then we'll come, we can come back up, can can come back to you. Okay. okay the next, next speaker. Next speaker is Salim Damerji. Hi. Yeah, I'm uh, Salim Damerji. Uh, I work and live in Mountain View. This project is fantastic. Um, and I'd like to ask EPC to support the proposed streamlined development review process uh, and also keep additional changes to a minimum. Um, I first want to say Lendlease has been a great neighbor to have um, in the community of Mountain View. They've done great public outreach. I've been to several of these meetings. They're very responsive to concerns. And I think that's shown in the project they're putting forward. Everything about this plan will be a benefit to the community. 7,000 new homes, that's a community benefit. The fact that these will be low VMT neighborhoods that prioritize people over cars, also a community benefit. The affordable housing, the preservation of trees, the 31 acres of new land for recreation, all of that is community benefit. And I also think the office space is a community benefit. It's good for the community to have more jobs uh, and a larger tax base to fund our social programs with. Um, I really do think Jeff was right when he said this is transformational. Uh, we have very few neighborhoods that are as vibrant and as green as what's being proposed here. And I think um, we should try to approve this as soon as we can. It's been years in the pipeline. Um, which, which I think is a little disappointing given how great this project will be. Uh, I, you know, it, it's kind of sad to see someone propose something so good and then bend over backwards to just get through government bureaucracy. Um, so I hope we approve this as quickly as possible. And I hope you support the streamlined development review process. I also think it's worth noting, we're now kind of operating with a bit more uncertainty related to these school fees. So the more you try to, um, I, I, I think we should just acknowledge that. That makes this project harder. There's more uncertainty to deal with, and I hope the EPC uh, is sensitive to that before making more requests from the developer that will make this project less economically feasible. Um, but yeah, it's an amazing project, uh, and I hope it gets built as soon as quick possible. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker is Kat. Great, can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kat Wortham. I am representing the Housing Action Coalition tonight. I'd first like to start off by saying that the Housing Action Action Coalition, excuse me, uh, has not yet reviewed the Google Master Plan, but we did do work in previous years around the um, precise plan process. So I'm here tonight just to echo the support that we had a few years ago. Um, we know that building housing is the best way that we can get out of our housing shortage. That isn't, unfortunately, doesn't just uh, touch Mountain View, but touches the entire Bay Area. Um, also, just want to say that this plan like Salim just said, is a long time in the making. Really want to see it move forward as quickly as possible. Um, really excited to, really excited by the opportunity to rethink this area and include housing as well as a ton of future amenities. 
Um, I think that's going to be really important to the future success of Mountain View. And so particularly excited about all of the open space and um, community benefits that there will be, including POPOs. Um, and then lastly, just really want to make sure development is encouraged and not discouraged. Um, as the last speaker alluded to, really just want to make sure that there is an appropriate fee stack for encouraging new development and redevelopment of this area and not discouraging it. Um, because, you know, we don't want to see nothing get built. Uh, so I'll leave my comments there and thank you for the time. Thank you. Okay, Gita Depp. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think we just lost you, Gita. Um, am I there back again? Yep, you're back now. Thank you, Chair Cranston and EPC members. I'm Gita Dev. I'm speaking on behalf of the Sierra Club, Loma Prieta chapter. Um, I'm not going to echo what others have already said. I would like to add to that. Um, the Sierra Club is also very supportive of this development proposal and largely because we, and I think the city, recognizes that North Bayshore is a very special area. It is uh, an ecological jewel. And uh, what Google is proposing will only embellish that. The proposal to have what they have called the eco gem, which is an ecological area where they are removing some buildings in order to create uh, wetlands and variety uh, three different ecosystems is going to be transformational for the area. I do agree. We do support that as well as recognizing that it'll provide very valuable open space. And I hope that all the EPC members will be very supportive of that. Uh, one other item that I would like to bring up is something that the, we have all worked on this precise plan very hard. And I, some EPC members were there too. The guidelines and standards that we have set for things such as uh, streets, lighting, curbs, gutters, it's now been several years and our thinking has moved beyond that. I would hope that in Google's master plan that they would consider green stormwater infrastructure as standard. And I hope that the city standards will allow that to be changed from the precise plan so that we can have bioswales with natural drainage, use the water more effectively to water the trees. And similarly, also pay attention to the lighting in this area, which is, oops, I'm so sorry. Excuse me, I apologize, can't control that. Um, the lighting in standards that we have set maybe should be modified to acknowledge the fact that there's new understandings of the importance of not having very bright lighting, even if they are parking lots. Thank you. I hope the council and uh, EBC and staff will take that into consideration. Okay. Next speaker. Erica Paul. Um, you need to unmute yourself. Ms. Paul, can you unmute yourself at star six on your phone? Um, looks like okay. next speaker, B. Hansen. Hi, um, my name is B. Hansen. I'm the current president of the Santiago Villa Neighborhood Association. We are the only residential uh, um, place in uh, North Bay Shore. I've been basically involved from the beginning when 
uh, Google started making doing plans uh, for North Bay Shore. I think that was 2014 or something. Uh, I was at the groundbreaking at Charleston East. Uh, I used the bike path and the Charleston Transit Corridor that Google has uh, built and maintained really beautifully. Uh, I was at the focus groups, uh, which they they have been very careful to involve all of the neighborhood groups and the, the stakeholders, uh, such as Sierra Club and uh, all of the others. Um, They've been very responsive. They're a really good neighbor. Uh, I've also worked at Google as well, but uh, that's beside the point. Um, basically, I just wanted to support this, uh, this um, redevelopment. Uh, I'm not looking forward to the actual construction part of it. I've been here for, for 25 years, I think. And so it's not, not pleasant, but the, the results of what Google is doing, uh, even over at Moffitt and at the uh, in the um, the landings area, it's all just just superlative architecture and just extremely well considered and has involved all of us uh, neighbors. We really appreciate them, and uh, I just hope you will. Um, be very thoughtful about this project and give it your best shot and support it. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle. Hello, Hello. can you hear me? Yep. Hi, good evening. My name is Michelle Galang, and I'm a second year apprentice, a commercial electrician with IBEW Local 332. And I have lived in Mountain View for over nine years. I'm a single mother of two daughters. And uh, I just got into the insider commercial program of IBEW 332. And it's a good way uh, for me to get paid a middle class wage so I can help support my daughter's education receive a better health care insurance and retirement package, and save up to buy and own a house. Um, I hope that I'm one of those elig uh, eligible to uh, benefit from, from this project. But before I was, uh, uh, before I got into the commercial, I was a residential electrician, apprentice of uh, IBEW, and uh, residential electricians get paid way less than commercial electricians because they have to compete against and share the market with the non-union trades. So I had to work two jobs uh, while applying for the Insight program to support me and my uh, daughters. So it is my um, advocacy to encourage more women to get in the trade and not just women, but I know a lot of young men and women who don't know what to do after high school or see themselves going to college um, can also become highly skilled construction workers. So, uh, and I know that this is definitely a rewarding and fulfilling career. And, but being in the union matters. I believe that being a union construction worker, especially as women are given more security, safety and equality in the workforce or in the workplace. Um, and regarding tonight's agenda, I st strongly support this project. We need more affordable housing in the area, and this master plan promises 7,000 new units, uh, including much needed affordable housing. I support development uh, and vision and that va gives value to our community. And um, uh, it's also a wonderful news to my fellow residential electricians if we uh, get this project. Uh, and I believe that we need to invest in the people who will build this housing, not just the buildings or facilities. We need to train and protect the next generation of skilled workers. So uh, please, I want Google and Landlist to commit to training and employing local construction workers. If developers commit to building union, there will be more opportunities like for people like me uh, to become skilled tradespeople. And I, don't, I understand that the building trades plan to meet with Google and Landlist to discuss the master plan further. So um, we hope that the planning commission um, will ensure that Google adheres to the city's own policy in the North Bay Shore precise plan. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Speaker. Emily Ramos. 
Hi, hi, um, members of the Planning Commission, Chair Cranston. Um, I'm here supporting Mountain View Yimby, um, who, ah, sorry, notifications, um, but in support of the uh, master plan uh, brought in front of you all today, uh, we support the proposed framework and we support the proposed streamlined development review process. Uh, one thing that we really want to note is that um, delaying this project will hurt us on the housing element. Um, if we delay and, and make it longer and more difficult to build in North Bay Shore. So we, we, we want to support more housing and we hope you join us on that. So yay, more housing. Thank you. Next speaker. Brian Horse. Hello, thank you for your time. My name is Brian and I am in strong support of this project proposed by Google. I feel there is no doubt that Google has offered several community benefits with this project vision. I am a construction worker and a plumbing instructor for UA Local 393. And I urge Google to once again consider using the local workforce with this build and to support the local community with a few thousand jobs that support apprenticeship programs and training the next generation of highly skilled workers. I truly appreciate all the work that Google brings to this area, and I would be honored to work on this project, just like I've been honored for every Google project that I've been a part of in the past. I truly believe that our shared standards of excellence make for some of the most amazing projects that I've been a part of, and I expect this one to be no different. Thank you in advance, Google, for continuing to build great things and supporting local laborers and, laborers and families in your community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kevin Ma. Evening, APC commissioners. My name is Kevin Ma, a resident in the San Antonio neighborhood, and I'm in support of this project. This project is a well done project. Despite the tree removals, I believe that Google will provide a tree replacement strategy that is suitable for the city, given that they're well accommodated into the environment as it is now with the egrets and herons that are in that area. Um, I am in support of streamlining because we want the project to be done faster. As we know, the housing element does depend on housing to be built in the next eight years. So the more housing we can build in the next eight years, the better the city can do to match its targets. Um, I believe that the project does provide good enough benefits, such as the sea level rise mitigation that inherently a city like us does need in funding, and as well as the affordable housing requirement that is part Though obviously we would always like more affordable housing, but any housing is great in this kind of market. So just to recap, just like, I'm strongly support this project moving fast. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Corey Corvetto. Hi, uh, my name is Corey and I'm a, a plumber with Local 393 and I'm currently working on the Google Bayview project. I'm supportive of this plan if it one establishes a local hire of not only our trade but of all the local construction trades, and two, it establishes um, apprentice programs as goals for this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, Alex B. Hey, all. Uh, Alex Brown, mobile homeowner, resident of North Bay Shore, member of the steering committee of the Santiago Villa Neighborhood Association. You've already heard from our Queen Bee. Uh, I'm also a member of the Alphabet Workers Union. It's great to see all the organized labor turnout tonight. Yay. Uh, Google's been an excellent neighbor and partner over the last several years working on this development. They've met with our community several times and are responsive to our community's feedback. Uh, I know it's going to take a while to land, but I'm personally very excited for all the new neighbors, both human and non-human, thanks to the additional housing as well as the green space improvements. But let's only let physics and availability of resources determine the time it takes, not bureaucracy. I'm also down with limiting the bright lights up here. Please bring back real nighttime. Uh, I know that EPC is more about land use uh, than design standards, but can we bring a sense of like wonder and whimsy in since we're creating mostly fresh neighborhoods? Uh, I'd also still love swings, seesaws, one of those spinny things. I think Jeff knows what I'm talking about. Uh, please uh, do what you can to make sure we get a local independent grocery store and an affordable gym. Just, I want the 
retail up here to serve the people up here as much as possible. Uh, oh, and by the way, I am very proud to see Alex Nunez up tonight. Great job, friend. You're going to be an incredible addition to this commission. I was going to say this in unagenda is common, but Zoom won't let me signal Chair Kirsten. I miss being in person. All right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, we, Ms. Kleinhaus wasn't able to, uh, we weren't able to connect audio with her. Can you try here again? Um, Ms. Kleinhaus, are you able to talk? Ms. Kleinhaus? Mm. Unfortunately, still not able to hear you. And then uh, did Mr. Jones spoke before or is he the last speaker? I, don't know where um, I think he's the last speaker, but he also was having connectivity issues. Okay. Mr. Jones, are you able to join us? Can you hear me now? Yep. Yep, I changed devices, so we should be good to go here. Hi, my name is Ryan Jones, and I'm a pipe fitter with UA Local 393. I'm a construction worker, and I support development that brings value to our communities. I want to support this project. We need more housing, and this master plan promises 7,000 new units, including much needed affordable housing. Google has made commitments that the commercial portion of this project will employ local construction workers and pay family supporting wages, and that is terrific. We need to invest in the construction workforce. We need to train the next generation of skilled workers. Uh, what is not clear is where will the workforce come from? Who will build the thousands of homes? We are, we are talking about a few thousand jobs. I hope that Google and Lindley's will stay up to, step up to the plate on these jobs too. Uh, the city's own precise plans for this area establishes local hire and training like our apprenticeship programs as goals for pro uh, projects like Google's. I ask that the Planning Commission ensure that Google adheres to this policy, and thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Um, no other speakers, we will bring it back to the Commission. So, uh, first, any questions, um, discussion from commission members? Commissioner Hamlin. Diane, I, I want to make sure I heard one thing you said correctly, because I, I may have missed it in the staff report. Um, did you say that in the first two phases, parkland dedication is expected? That's correct, 80% of it. I think that's the last sentence in the open uh, space and park section of the staff report. Thanks. Um, and then can you talk a little bit about the phasing of the affordable housing um, sites? Is that, where where does that fall in the phasing? Or is that TBD? Sure, I would just like to show the phasing plan. Um, I know it's a little bit difficult uh, for people uh, to see when we are looking at the, just the phasing plan. But if, if someone is trying to understand this, they might have to look at the phasing plan along with the, um, um, the housing plan as well. So as part of phase one itself, which you can see on the screen right here in dark blue outline, um, phase one and phase two both combine. Google is proposing to uh, provide 40 plus percentage of housing. As part of phase one, two sites will be dedicated, um, which I'm indicating on my screen right now. One is along Shoreline Boulevard right here, uh, and the other one is indicated over here. This is along the Hare Avenue site. These are two sites which will be dedicated for affordable housing. Another site is along Shoreline Boulevard, which is right here, and that will include uh, inclusionary housing uh, and a lot of other housing um, Proposals are included towards 
um, Space Parkway. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna go up quickly. Yeah, so phase one is essentially this and these three parcels right here. Phase two is everything um, below shoreward uh, way, which includes a lot of sites, which might include inclusionary housing units and one site, which will be part of the land dedication uh, for affordable housing. So first two phases, um, 40 plus percentage of uh, housing units will be developed. Phase three and phase four, no new uh, housing will be developed. That will be concentrated on the office development uh, and rest of the housing units will be developed in the Joaquin area um, and the gateway area that will be towards the later phases. Uh, you know, it moves actually inside um, from shoreline towards half and then the gateway portion of a residential site on the gateway portion is um, at the very end. And so from the moment of dedica dedication of that land, does that allow the city's affordable housing staff to begin um, putting out um, requests to, to developers and the NOFA? Like, is that the moment? So starting in phase one and two, that process can begin immediately. Is that right? Once it's dedicated, then yes, staff can begin that process depending upon what all things we have in the pipeline. Okay. And then can you um, just also talk about the community benefit piece um, related to the Charleston corridor? Sure. So um, when when is the phasing of the community benefits? It's at the time, because this is a long time horizon, right? right? So yeah. if can you talk a little bit about like with the Charleston transit corridor, if the design study is being is conducted right now and then it it's going out to construction. construction. Would this enable that project to begin sooner, as soon as the master plan is approved? That is correct. So I think a lot of the details are still being figured out, and we are currently negotiating that with the applicant. But our intent is that the community benefits, as um, you know, any other typical project, uh, should be provided fairly soon after the project approval. And, and that will definitely help us with, you know, constructing one of the most priority transportation improvement project that we have in the area. Thank you. That's really helpful. I just want to understand how these pieces fit together, um, given given how much we're talking, it's development we're talking about. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Dempsey. So uh, a couple of different questions. Let me just let me just start with two. The uh, first, following on with um, Commissioner Hamar's question, for the land that's dedicated to the city, what is the condition of the land when it's dedicated over? Is it the, who does the demo? I guess that's the question. Is it given over as like dirt, or is it given over as a space that we, the city, have to pay for the demo? Stephanie, you want to take this question? I'm not sure. Um, I think some of those finer green details are things that we'd have to work out with the applicant. Um, typically, sites are delivered um, without without um, structures on them, unless that's something that we find beneficial in the short term in order to be able to lease. But those specific details are things that we'd have to work through for each site as part of uh, the development review and the in the development agreement. Okay. All right, so that gets worked out later. So the the other large question I have, and it's something that I know very little about, but I'm I, I you know, we've got a lot of folks from the trades here tonight watching this, and I'm I'm interested in knowing more about the issue that they raise. So this is kind of a two part question, one part for the city, and then one part for Google. So for the city, what are the relevant either goals or requirements for local hire or um, you know, labor interaction? for the space that we're talking about. What, what's already in the books? And anybody on the city side that, that can can field that one, I'd love to know what you think. Well, I can, Commissioner, um, I could tell you that, that there is a policy that the um, 
as several speakers referred to in the North Bay Shore Precise Plan, it's not mandatory. It just requires, it, it encourages the use of local workforce um, and local business sourcing um, for development in the plan area. So it's not mandatory, but it's encouraged. Consider to goal, okay. Um, and then for Google, sort of what is the, what's the state of, what, what level of commitment has been made in terms of local hire for any of those phases. I mean, I know it's like 30 years worth of phases, so that's a lot of time. But I'm curious to know um, what is the level of that? Uh, what, what commitments have been made, just so that I know? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, so I know we're currently in talks with the trades, but I'll ha actually hand it over to Michael Timoff, who's our uh, district director. Uh, he may have further information on that. Great, thank you, Jeff, and uh, thank you, Commissioner Dempsey, for for the question. Um, you know, Google has historically worked with the trades and committed to using the trades on all of Google commercial construction, um, and we intend to continue to do that both here in North Bay Shore and East Wisman. Uh, we will continue to have co those conversations around the apprenticeship programs, job training, and local hire uh, with the unions, as will um, Lend Lease as a residential development partner. But it sounds like something that you've been doing in the past for the for the projects that you've already been doing. That's correct. Great. That's great. I've got more questions, but I can save them for the end. Great. Thank you. Other commissioner questions? At a cup of oh, commissioner Yen, sorry. Thank you. Um, I wanted to follow up on one of Commissioner Haymeyer's questions. <coughs> about the housing, we talked about the uh, phase one and two, and it actually delivers a lot of the housing there, including the land dedication. Um, and this question is for Google, I guess, and all things going you know, as planned, what is the timing for completion of phase two in your minds? Completion of phase two, that, that is also a good question. I think, you know, when we're looking that far out, we, we like to be optimistic about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I will say probably the completion of phase two would be late 2030, 31, somewhere in that area, maybe 32 if, you know, but there's a lot of PCP permits to, to happen, a lot, of, a lot of city permitting to happen, and then, you know, a lot of construction that will go on um to make that happen and i think you know i, I don't want to speak for lend lease I'll, I'll let andrew jump in here but i know absorption rates of the housing are something that they consider as a residential developer pr predominantly so they have to be able they don't want too many empty units sitting there ever if, which i doubt if that would be the case but um andrew do you have anything to you want to jump in on or do we have andrew chapel Ready. There he is. Okay. Yeah. I think we have you now, Andrew. Can uh, hi there. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Look, I, I mean, I think this is, um, you know, just for everyone in the in the simplest way, I can explain this. You know, we are motivated to get as many people living in this place as fast as we possibly can, and you know, commercially. Um, we're driven by our ability to attract people and compel people to want to live here. So we're going to do that as fast as we possibly can. I think we always um, are confronted by realities of the economic cycle. And so that's the only thing that's going to stop us from really getting through this as fast as we possibly can. So we're all incentivized to make sure that this place is brought to life as quickly as possible, and that includes you know, attracting people to want to live there. So, uh, you know, there there is nothing more simple than that. We are really driven by our ability to to um, work with the market and the economic cycles that we're confronted with. So um, <clears throat> I think Jeff's absolutely right. We're sort of targeting that 2030 timeframe. But if we can bring it forward, we absolutely will. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was just curious about the overall timing of just because uh, the last time I think North Bay Shore came before us, the timing was 15 to 20 years. And I, so I noticed that there was a big jump. And I know with a lot of economic uncertainty, 
there's always some buffer. It's just seemed like a, a big buffer. And I wanted to find out if something happened in the meantime to cause that jump. And the second part of that question is if phase two is slated optimistically to be 10 years from now, that means the, the remaining phases um, for the, let's see, if we were being optimistic, the 15, 20 year would be just another 10 years to complete everything else, if we were being optimistic. You're exactly correct. And that's the reason for the 30 year ask on the DA is because there are so many unknowns when you start to get that far out, um, as Andrew was saying, with the economic cycles. But, uh, you know, I, I still believe that if things go really well and the support is there from, you know, all parties, uh, you know, that are part of this, I think I think we could do it in, in just over 20 years. And, and really, it, I think that DA ask that Diana mentioned is is just a buffer as a just in case. But um, construction takes a long time. And as others have pointed out, you know, we started this process back in 2014 and here we are seven years later, you know, um, with really no housing to show nothing, you know, very minimal built already. So that's would be a third of the way through that 20 year DA to, to begin with. So um, there are unforeseen things at play here. Oh, I, I certainly understand the unforeseen. Um, so just um, to to put it out there, just to be clear, you're you're looking at phase one and two to be approximately half of the total time. Is that correct? It proportionally. Third. Is that right? I, I don't know how you guys break it out, but just in terms of uh, how I'm calculating it out, it it seems to be with the ideal twenty year and phase one and two would take 10 years, then you're thinking phase one and two is actually half of the entire time. I, yes, I think, I think you're, you're reading that correctly. Okay, okay. Um, that was one question. Um, I'm gonna jump a little and then I'm gonna hop on to Commissioner Dempsey's question with the, the local unions. Um, I appreciate Mr. Timoff's continuous um, efforts to reach out and work with them. And you've already shown that you've had um, relationships and have supported local workers. So is there anything you can say to sort of allay those fears? Um, just the fact that so many have come out tonight to try to ensure that this happens. I'm just wondering if, you know, if because I'm not party to it, if the talks are going really well, why still such uncertainty? Um, I know you probably can't sign anything right now, but is there any way you can um, allay some of their fears? Sure, thank you for the question, Commissioner Yen. Um, you know, I, what I heard um, was a great deal of support, right? And for the projects, right? And the goals of the, the city to deliver housing and affordable housing, and, and we support those goals. Um, and we also, you know, want to get to building this and, and make sure that that vision is realized. Um, the conversations that we have had thus far with the unions are, are very productive. And as I mentioned, uh, we have committed on all Google construction to use, um, use union labor um, and we'll continue those discussions, you know, with the specifics that were raised tonight around the city's local hiring policy um, we are having um, conversations internally about job training programs and supporting the apprenticeships. So those conversations are in process. Um, I think what you're hearing tonight is just encouragement, um, hopefully, uh, rather than fear, because um, from our perspectives, those, those conversations continue to be productive. Great, thank you. Um... And then this is for the city, perhaps, and I know numbers need to be fine tuned just very quickly with the 5% inclusionary housing and the 15% land dedication. Do you guys have in mind a general number of where, what level of affordability is in the inclusionary and we what level of affordability in the land dedication? We have not figured out those details yet. That is as part of the next step staff will be working on that. I see. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I, I do have a couple other questions, but I'll, I'll hold and let other people ask theirs. Just a quick comment, Christian Nunez, this is your, is your first time. Um, just if, you, if you have a question, just 
click the raise hand and I'll that's kind of the cue that I use that you have a question. So uh, uh, Commissioner Caprillas has a question. Um, so we'll go to her next. Um, <clears throat> just a quick question. The master plan that you've given to us, Diana, is that one that is from the city? I think um, historically we had a couple of landowners out here and we were concerned about um, what master plan would be presented forward. And it was my understanding that the city was going to be really running with this master plan from, from our perspective. And I appreciate that we're going through and by the general and the precise plan, but I just wonder if that, that has been agreed upon by all landowners of this property. So Stephanie, correct me if I'm wrong, and um, I would like um, Google to probably speak a little bit about the ownership of the property. But um, to answer your question, Commissioner, this is the master plan I presented tonight is Google's um, master plan proposal to the city for our review. This is a little bit different than the gateway master plan where city has um, you know, encountered uh, two separate property owners and um, not much agreement on how the development is gonna happen and city uh, council directed staff to work on and prepare this gateway master plan. That is separate, but it is part of this master plan. I, I know this can be a little bit confusing, but the gateway master plan is part of the Google North Bay Shore master plan, but it's just a small portion. And it only includes the, the Google controlled parcels within the gateway master plan that is included in this um, North Bay Shore master plan here. Um, Stephanie, Jeff, Michael, anyone would like to add anything else to that? I would give Stephanie the first opportunity there, but no, I don't think we have a lot to add to that. Um, you know, we, we can't control all of the gateway. And so um, we're, we're kind of in limbo waiting for the rest of that process. And, and I guess this is my concern because everybody is anxious for this master plan to proceed and we want housing and we want to meet our housing element requirements and all of that within a certain limited time. And so, um, you know, the plan looks, looks great, but we need to make sure that everybody is um, in agreement with this in order for us to really jump start it. It was my understanding that it was delayed because of the, the uh, difference of opinion. Is that, is that correct or? So I think you're referring more to the gateway master plan and just coming back to kind of the fundamentals of the purpose of the master plan is really to plan um, multi-owner and multi pro property land areas so that there is a um, a you know cohesive design across those multiple properties with the multiple property owners but the unique thing about the google north base or master plan is that they actually own all of those properties which is pretty unique in such a large master plan area so um, there's not the same dynamic of agreement that needs to take place with the North Bay Shore master plan that was occurring with the Gateway master plan. So the reason the city took over the um, Gateway master plan was because the, the two property owners were having difficulty coming to agreement um, on, you know, kind of what would be the ultimate um, you know, land use arrangement. And so the city took over that process to try to help uh, streamline the future development of them. But that is not the case of the uh, the Google kind of a North Bay Shore master plan area. Okay, so we're just we're just talking about the um, the specific Google owned land uh, in this master plan. Is that what I'm understanding? That's correct. Okay, thank you. And, and if I, 
if I may just add to that, our plant, we, we have met with, with staff and the other landowner um, many times over the past couple of years. And as the city took over the master planning process for the gateway, um, made sure that what we were putting forward was consistent with the city's vision and that master plan and that both Google and the other landowner could separately and independently develop our land again in, in compliance with the city's master plan for the gateway. Thanks for that. Uh, Commissioner Nunez. Thank you. Um, yeah, so in terms of uh, my thinking around this, uh, I think as several of the speakers and uh, I believe the applicant noted, um, the lack of housing uh, or the need for housing is definitely uh, a substantial concern to the community. Um, in particular, affordable housing, affordability is definitely something uh, that I believe ought to be prioritized. Um, and the reason why I say this is because of the proposed development agreement uh, of 30 years. Um, I understand that there's a phased in approach. So there will be some kind of almost waterfall cascading approach that, you know, completion of one triggers another uh, and triggers another to move forward in terms of development. Uh, but I, I am a little bit uh, hesitant or concerned or apprehensive around not knowing exactly or having some sort of stated like milestone trajectory for how we can expect these, uh, the time that we can see these phases to actually be completed in. Um, that's something that I, I would very much be very supportive of. Um, and one of the things um, that I was wondering, maybe this is a city question or a question for the applicant, um, in terms of the delivery of the affordable units uh, compared to, you know, like the market rate units, um, I think Commissioner Yen, uh, Yen noted that uh, the phase one and two development, uh, if I'm not mistaken, would deliver the bulk of the housing uh, at that offset, and that could be deployed uh, at about 15 years. Uh, what would be the amount of percentage um, out of the entire total proposed units uh, that would be the residential units that would be developed by that end of phase two? 42%. 42%. Okay. And then um, out of that 42%, what would be of the affordable units that were delivered? Uh, how much percentage would that represent out of the total proposed by the plan? We don't have that uh, level of details yet. We do have some approximate numbers on the units that will be dedicated, um, that will be received through land dedication, um, but we do not have the numbers on the inclusionary housing units in the market rate um, development yet. So I think those numbers will be will be coming through for the refinement of the plan. Okay. Um, yeah. Because one thing I'm trying to think through is what opportunities exist um, to be able to uh, within this kind of 30 year plan. Uh, and then also even considering, you know, that streamlining process as well. Um, what opportunities exist for any kind of stipulation uh, that would say something along the lines of, um, you know, 100 at the extreme level. Um, or even some level in between, just take, for example, at that 15 year mark or by the 20 year mark of the DA, uh, the full allotment of affordable units would have been delivered with, you know, the other 10 years, um, or even like 15 by, you know, 15 years, 75% of the affordable units have been delivered by 20, you know, hundred percent, you know, are there any, like, what are the, in what ways might that be something that is fitted into the um recommendation so that oh sorry go ahead oh sorry i was just gonna say so i think we are anticipating that there are going to be kind of benchmarks incorporated into the development agreement for delivery of of things exactly that you are speaking of so um and i just want to reiterate that that this study session is really intended to hear feedback 
and um, further things that the EPC recommends that be studied or incorporated into the into the project. You know, this isn't a final entitlement uh, recommendation. So we're really kind of at the beginning and we're at high level. So we're, we're really seeking your feedback and direction on things that you'd like to see uh, studied or incorporated. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that would definitely, the delivery of affordable units um, faster than that 30 year time frame would definitely be something I'd be interested in. Um, and I just wanted to add, you know, um, although we don't know about the inclusionary housing units, just based on the land dedication itself, around 37.7% of affordable housing units uh, delivered within the first two phases. Okay, yeah, that, that is helpful. Um, and then I guess I'll have an, another uh, general comment. Um, one thing that I did uh, find very helpful out of the uh, committee outreach, which I appreciate, you know, everyone, the applicant doing as well, um, is that desire, that stated desire for um, local amenities like a grocery store, um, like a bike shop, a gym, uh, you know, if the goal is to reduce uh, some of these trips, you know, it would be a shame if people had to drive from uh, North Bay Shore down to the Safeway here or elsewhere to do something they could do on a bicycle. Um, I really appreciate that point of community feedback. Um, and then I do have one more question about the park and open space. Uh, that green belt is, I, I noticed that the green belt uh, cut through some of the parkland that was dedicated to the city. Um, I'm wondering, is that green belt owned as in, by the city when it cuts through the park? Is it all one popa or is it all dedicated to the city? What is the status of the green belt? There's a green loop. Jeff, would you like to take that question? Yeah, I, you could put that back up. Thank you. So, so the, the lighter green are, are the POPA areas that, that Google will retain ownership of, and then the darker green um, is the land that's dedicated to the city. Um, and, and so in theory, yes, I, I guess that, that does become city at that point. Um, that piece of the green loop is designed in that way because that's existing today. So we're taking advantage of trees, storm water, understory, um, and some other and some and some other elements that are already built into that piece. And I think the scale might be deceiving here as well. We always have to remember how big North Bay Shore really is. And that size of the park is has usable space on both sides of that for sure. Um, while we haven't gotten into any park design and that will be done with the city, um, you know, we look forward to that opportunity as we move forward but it'd be a shame to not take advantage of the existing ecology that's already there and doing really well. Sure, and so then I just, I'm trying to get some clarity on, you know, I noticed, right, you said, hey, uh, that kind of darker green is city dedicated, the lighter green is Popa, but, but that belt is an even darker green. And so I'm just trying to understand what is like the ownership? Is it that really dark green belt within the you know second darkest green is does that mean that uh, that trail that green loop is city owned in that spot but then when it passes through the rest of the you know does it become popa again like what what is the ownership of that yeah group? well I I think this will probably be something that gets worked out further in a DA but I, so the ownership is only two colors it's the lighter green which is the popa which remains google owned and publicly accessible and then the joaquin commons and the eco gem and the and the shorebird yards where the school might be those are dedicated to the city um the the darker green green loop is just there as a graphical representation of, of where the green loop is um you know I, I think that there is a there's a public easement a, a public access easement around the entirety of the green loop and so the intention that's its intention um the ownership i guess in theory i think this is something we need to talk to the city about it might change as it goes through that joaquin commons park um but i'm not sure that makes the most sense 
from a maintenance point of view or anything else. So I think that's something to talk about as we work through the master plan. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, I just, you know, I don't really know what the implications are, or I don't know, maybe other people are, it just to your point has to be worked out. But I think it would be good to just have clarity around what the implications are of, you know, who owns that loop, when and where, and just having clarity around that, that would be very good. Um, I would have a ton of other questions, but I'll just uh, hand it off to anyone else who wants to have questions. I have, a, I have a few. Um, the, the district parking is wasn't kind of clear clear in the in, in the, uh, the phasing document that uh, as part of the Google summary. The so the building of the of the lot over the parking garage over on the shoreline property, the district parking over way by by um, by San Antonio. How will that fit into the phasing? Is that is the assumption is that we built be built early on to be able to get those those uh, cars consolidated into single areas or out or is that something you haven't even looked at yeah so lot c would be the amphitheater site would be where we would prefer to have the first uh, district parking structure those negotiations haven't started with the city yet since that is city-owned land so that's something that we need to continue into the future. Um, Marine Way would be built on Google property out by San Antonio, as you said, but that is a far off in the future. That's one of the very future phases or longer future phases, I guess. Um, and you know, with every intent of prioritizing people over cars, you know, there's a there's a long term goal of not having to build that, not needing to build that, I guess, that second parking structure. But that all comes down to how well the TDM plan actually works. Okay, let me maybe ask the question a different way. Is okay. building the structure on at Shoreline Amphitheater a something that will be required for phase one or phase two or phase three to be able to be successfully move ahead? That's what I'm trying to understand is, is that, is there a linkage between the construction of that parking garage and the rest of the phases? Yes, in, in general terms, there is, that that would be needed for phase one. Okay, so that needs to be early. Okay. Um, second question I had was, I guess this is more a question for staff. Um, the essentially re-landscaping of an area of this size, you know, 3,000 plus trees. Um, does the city have the knowledge, bandwidth, resources to work with Google to make sure that we're developing this great new urban landscape, uh, greenscape um, successfully, or are we going to be entirely dependent on Google to decide what the rate trees, uh, what should that look like? So I think um, I would just um, like to remind the commission that uh, not too long ago, we actually prepared the North Bay Shore plan palette, which actually talks in a lot of detail, um, you know, type of trees, species, which are more suitable for the North Bay Shore precise plan area. And we did that effort in consultation with a lot of other groups like Sierra Club, um, Audubon Society, a lot of people were involved in that. Um, that said, that is going to be the basis where we start uh, the replanting plan review. And, um, you know, that's a good guide. In addition to that, we do have some in-house expertise, but at the same time, we will be, you know, um, hiring consultants if need be um, to get additional help um, to review what the Google is, um, applicant's proposal is going to be in terms of replanting of the uh, trees and plants in the area. And then next question, I guess the the thread that I heard through the questions from the the trades was not that there was a concern about the commercial space, uh, but more about the residential space. Um, Google's not built housing before, and so uh, uh, as Michael's indicated, you know, you've done a lot of work with them on the commercial space. Uh, so two parts, I guess. My understanding that any any housing built up by the city on the dedicated land um, were required today to use uh, union labor. 
Is that correct? So any of the dedicated land, anything that would be out there would be required to be um, from the unions. Is that correct? The staff question. I'm not sure, Sandy, um, do you know the answer to this question? Um, no, I do know that um, like prevailing wage would be required. So, you know, typically that would be using union labor. If okay. it's a city funded project. Okay. And then the question is really more for Len Lee on the residential. I'm assuming that Len Lease would be actually taking care of the construction of the residential portion or would be Google be doing that? And if Len Lease is doing that, what's Len Lease's practice regarding prevailing wages? Yeah, I, I can I can start that answer um, and then let Andrew jump in here or or Faith, somebody from the Lend Lease team. But um, Lend Lease will be doing the, the residential and, you know. So, Andrew, are you there? I'm, I am here. Can, can you hear me? Yep. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, thanks. Um, look, uh, Lend Lease has been active in um, the local market for, for about 20 years or so now um, in a construction capacity. And we've got a long history of working collaboratively, collaboratively with, with the unions. And we intend to do so here also in, in, in North Bayshore. And we've started those discussions with our, our union partners and, and they, they're going to continue and fully expect that, you know, we are going to be employing a lot of local uh, local uh, hires in this in this uh, development. Okay. And then I guess this last question for staff. Um, it's my understanding that the gateway master plan only encompasses what's in this plan, which would be called phase eight. And that the gateway master plan is still currently scheduled to be presented the council for approval in December. Is that correct? So there will be a gateway master plan in place um, in theory, assuming if, if council. That's correct. Okay. All right, those are my questions. So uh, I guess we'll open it for, uh, can we go to the question, to the questions that's, that uh, Staff that looked us to look for us to address. Um, the first one was the, the additional input on a very long list of things: um, land use, affordable housing, parks, open space, district parking, construction phasing, implementation, and complete streets network. So, uh, Commissioner Yen. Uh, thank you. Uh, just a couple more questions. I hope they're they're very easy to answer. Um, can you remind me of the process of the POPA design and where that falls in? Is it project by project or is that, um, yeah, that's the question. <laughs> what it is, is the going, process? It is going to be on uh, from project to project. Development by development, not phase by phase. It's just whatever surrounds the POPA, the building that gets design that comes yeah. forward and then that's when they discuss the popa so if the popa is is stretching across several projects per se um i know i and, mm -hmm. I, and I have confidence that google will be looking at it as a whole uh, does the city and the public have a chance to chime in at that point as part of the development project yes okay thank you mm -hmm. And let's see, what was the other question? Ah, yes. Um, Ms. Dev had, in her public comments, had asked about water management and lighting. And I was just curious if there was anything in the precise plan that would prevent the most innovative technologies for water management, like the bioswales and so on and so forth. I think Google North Bayshore has been, um, you know, um, when we um, adopted the plan, we were looking at the most innovative way of transforming the overall neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything in the precise plan which restricts um, exploring, uh, you know, new options and alternatives. If anything, you know, whenever we will be reviewing 
new proposal, new alternatives, we will always go back to the original principles and see, does this match to the overall goals and principles of the precise plan, which I think, um, you know, all these new options and alternatives do go towards more sustainability and sustainable options and stuff. And so they should be, they would be in compliance with the, with the precise plan goals. Okay, great. Thank you. And I, I trust that Google is always looking at the most innovative, um, but at some point you just have to draw the line and say, this is what we're doing, even if something new is being invented with just a, such a long process, who knows what might be invented in the next 10 years. So I just wanted to hear from Google that, um, that, that yes, you are open to being flexible to what would be most innovative in the highest technology within reason. Uh, 100%, yeah. Innovation is just something that we do every day or we try to do every day for sure. Um, so I think that's that we're always looking to the better solution and looking out into the future. Um, so that is something that we are going to dig into more in the next year, I would say, and, and really come down to at least the, the lighting design as a baseline and then we can always improve it with future PCPs. Okay, I and mean, that's including the wa the water management as well. I know the, you guys the water, the water water. included, yeah, just yes. The, yeah. How you do the street yeah. uh, water, the runoff. Um, yeah. And as far as lighting, just not the most innovative, also just decreasing the amount of lighting. Um, I know that safety is always a big concern, but we can be most efficient with whatever light is put out. And, you know, and I think um, I, I just wanted to hear that you guys are also on board with what Ms. Dev had said with trying to minimize lighting especially the yes. sky lit lighting. Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And, and we, and we work closely with, with the Sierra club and Audubon and the, and everybody else to, to help yeah, actually help us in that review of those systems. So that, that's, that's great to that's hear. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dempsey. So if I just wanted to underscore a, a really small point, I think the city's probably going to do this anyway, but I felt like it was important. So I'm just going to add this as, as input. I really hope that the pedestrian and bike connection between the end of Shorebird and into Stevens Creek Trail is going to be robust because I, I very much expect that there's going to be a lot of people going through that connector. Um, Stevens Creek is, in my mind, the best way to go cross town uh, on a bike because it feels safe. And so you may have kids coming out out of the neighborhood down there to go off to their middle schools and people are going to want to come up and see these great parks. You know, a lot of people going through there would be my guess. So I just hope we're going to have a very robust connection there that can handle, uh, uh, hopefully, a lot of folks who are going to want to come in and see this gym. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Yinda, do you have another comment? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, since Commissioner Dempsey had just brought that up, um, I forgot to mention that I had already heard this presentation from Jeff and uh, Google. I just wanted to say that first. Um, and I also did comment on that, and I believe he had mentioned that PG&E owned some of the land there, and it's, it's a little bit difficult to get more than the one connection. However, I also wanted to chime in and, and press for more porosity. Um, in any shape or fashion in terms of walkability, bikeability. And I, I believe Jeff was, was striving for that too. And I didn't know whether or not you guys had thought of going along the, um, the uh, San Santiago Villa portion. I didn't know if pg &E also owned that connection. Um, I didn't go visit myself to see what that looked like, but is there a possibility of connecting more south along the north yes. portion? Yeah, so I, I can jump in there. So PG&E, their power lines run the entire length of North Bayshore, all the way down into the city south of 101 and out to the bay. So they, they own a strip of land there and, and or easements somewhere. So we, we need to work with them in order to get more porosity, but that is always something that we're doing. I, I know our transportation team is working with the city's transportation team as well to try to figure out where those best connections are and how to really how to optimize Stevens Creek uh, as as you both are saying here um, it, it is a it is a very primary connection into into North Bay Shore for sure 
uh, yeah, we're going to, you know, try to decrease the the automobile traffic and and may potentially have like rush hour of bike traffic over on Stevens Creek. <laughs> so and, we and can minimize that. that. That would be good. Yeah, ho hopefully we can solve that with the, you know, the shoreline overpass bike uh, bridge when, when that gets built. And so then that would allow, then we would have three really good bike routes into North Bay Shore with Permanente Creek over the overcrossing as well, over 101. Yeah, the more the better. It's a big swath of land. Just three entry yep. points is still kind of fiddly. Sorry. Agreed. <laughs> 101 is a challenge, so there's no doubt about it. Right. Thanks. I guess, I mean, I'll take a, a crack at this on, on these questions. So overall, um, I'm I'm supportive of the, the, the general land use plan, what I've seen here. Um, the affordable housing um, seems to be by, by doing land dedication, hopefully we get that faster and Potentially, uh, um, if it's done with with uh, you know local partners like Alta Housing and Eden Housing and so forth, uh, that can happen more quickly than it might otherwise. Um, I like the green loop and the and the, and the open space. Um, I, I'm uh, I like the idea of district parking. I'm a little concerned about it being way in the back of the whole property, uh, but I, I, not having parking lots everywhere is a good thing. Um, like Commissioner Nunez, I'm a little. I would like to see something in the in the overall plan that that places some um, you know, expectation of execution on the plan in a in a reasonable manner. I understand that there's going to be economic cycles that will it may have, it may move things back and forth. But you know, you look at this, you're talking about three to four years per phase. Uh, if you just divide up 30 years into by eight. And that's a long time. And so anything we, I guess what I would love to see anything that could, it would pull the housing that's currently starts to reappear out in phase five, somehow into phase three and, and, and four, that would be great. The other thing that I guess, and I don't staff, I don't know how you would incorporate this, but right now I understand why phase eight is where it is, where it is. Um, if there's not a lot of, um, interest in the part of the part of the other landowner to uh to, to work in that but if they came if they change their mind somewhere between now and 25 years from now i would love to find a way to try to pull phase eight forward and would hope that there's nothing in the development agreement that would that would prevent doing something in the gateway area sooner rather than at the very end of the process um so the phasing is probably my biggest my biggest question and making sure that happens in a timely fashion and if we if there's any opportunity to accelerate that that there's nothing in the in the master plan or in the development agreement that would prevent that from happening sooner okay. uh commissioner Capellis. um i i believe that the the plan uh, certainly with the land use and all of the things that we have seen and i too have have um had the opportunity to look at the overall plan in detail with Google, just to uh, disclose that um, meeting with them prior to this meeting. And I think they are um, certainly aligning to the uh, precise plan that we put together um, in, in looking at how we wanted this land to be used in in North Bay Shore, and I think that they have been attentive to that. And so um, I don't have really any additional input because at this at this level of planning, it's just a general overall, this is what we want to do. And I think as as the plan proceeds and gets into a little bit more detail, it'll be a little bit uh, easier to kind of get get that vision of exactly how how this is going to um really evolve as as we go so i personally don't have any uh additional comments at this time but uh certainly uh like to see where we're going with with this thank you commissioner hammer thank you um 
to echo our you chair cranston and commissioner Caprillas, um i think this project really reflects um a responsiveness to the north bay share precise plan um we didn't talk as much about it today i did also meet with the applicant and i think the transformation from surface parking lots to this really vibrant dense um diverse and integrated neighborhood that we're, we're imagining and, and really seeing come to life and maybe on a time horizon that isn't as fast as we would like to see it executed. Um, I just think with the densities that we're trying to put out there, I really appreciate the prioritization of open space and, and really in a comprehensive way that um, that really looks at not only the circulation in and out and to get people on alternative forms of transportation, but, but really thinking how we can maximize the open space, um, both for residents and the ecological system. So um, I would share the comment about Stevens Creek and, and being able to make sure that we're building up that infrastructure as well to support the number of um, cyclists and pedestrians who will wanna come to this great neighborhood um, and, and just ongoing conversations. But as Commissioner Capella said early on in this process, um, I'm really, really excited about where this is heading. Other commissioners or Commissioner Ian. Uh, yes, in general, um, answering the question, I think I'm, I'm I'm very supportive of the overall concepts and where everything's going. Um, very appreciative of Google outreach to all the stakeholders, and it and it sounds like every group has been um, giving positive feedback about that. So that is great. Thank you for being a good neighbor. Um, and I know it's been a long time in the making. Um, but I have to say that every iteration I see improves it. So it, it's been worthwhile. Um, so as far as additional input at this higher level, there's nothing necessarily that I want to add. I just do hope for the complete streets from what I saw that there was a breakdown of the blocking and that buildings will not be enormous, giant super block buildings. Um, and that it won't be just like a cutaway through the ground floor to pass through and yeah, you have over building, um, not that kind of, you know, access through. So that's it. Overall, positive reactions. Uh, Commissioner Nunez. Uh, yeah, so definitely uh, overall, uh, very supportive of getting new housing, very supportive of uh, getting this project moving forward. Um, I do have a question and then I'll try to streamline it into what uh, everyone else is is getting into as well. Um, my, probably for the applicant or for the city, whoever uh, is best suited to answer, uh, how much has uh, climate resiliency uh, at this point in time uh, factored into the overall planning? Um, and by that, I mean uh, resiliency from the building perspective with uh, measures like green roofs, uh, albedo reflectivity, um, or district-wide like flood control measures, um, how much of that has gone into this planning so far? That's a really good question. Um, so at a master plan level, we're, we're looking at things like the open space, like to the beginning of looking at stormwater management and, and uh, some of those types of elements. We're also, you know, have projections for canopy coverage to cut down on heat island effect. Um, at the building level, we're learning a lot from our office buildings that we're on, that are under construction and that we're building. So we're we're actually measuring a lot from those already today, Charleston East and Bayview, and and some others over in Sunnyvale. Um, so we're we're always taking into account um, the newest. Uh, you know, technologies that can help us in that regard. Um, I think we've got a lot of opportunity here to explore new areas like, like you said, with the green roofs and actually occupiable green roofs and, and so on and so forth. Um, that's the beauty of building in this a little bit more dense mixed use environment is we have new opportunities to explore. So when we get further into architecture, we'll, we'll definitely be exploring all of those options to their fullest as well. Um, you know, I, I think I could I could keep going on our the rest of our resilience. You know, raising the the building floors above you know the FEMA flood levels as we're required to, um, so on and so forth. And district systems are always a big part of it. So you know that is a, a big piece of our plan is um, 
you know, the district systems can then take pressure off of the, the rest of the city system. Um, we can do water blending so that we can better utilize the recycled water that's coming out of Palo Alto. Um, you know, the EcoGem is going to act as a, as a large stormwater uh, element, um, you know, just because of it, as we take away the asphalt from that area, it's now just much more porous. And so that, that's how, you know, we're really examining this today. North Bay Shore is about 58% asphalt in the area that we're redeveloping. And so we're going to, you know, really open that up with 30 acres of new open space. And so that transformation is, is what we're all hoping to see. Cool. And uh, to what extent uh, would uh, Google and Lendlease, and if the answer right now is like, don't know, then, you know, that's fine too. But um, to what extent would Google and Lendlease feel comfortable committing to, uh, you know, looking at, uh, on a more conscious level, having it very documented that, you know, as construction is phased in that, um, you know, those techniques uh, will be consciously sought out to make sure that, you know, the if essentially what I'm concerned about is the human condition, right? And having, making sure that the people inside are betrayed from, you know, high temperatures, um, flooding, um, and making sure that that would be equitably, uh, basically distributed to make sure that the like dedicated affordable units, for example, don't receive less uh, tree canopy, less green roof, less technology, what would be the extent of comfort that uh, Google and Lease would have kind of documenting that in the plans moving forward? Yeah, we've got some pretty high, uh, you know, social infrastructure goals. I'm not sure about how how to go about documenting those exactly on a performance basis. But um, you know, that's just the way that we generally think about things is really on, you know, designing for health, designing for the, you know, the human and, and, the, and the performance that goes along with that. So um, I would venture to say that our, our own goals are potentially, you know, I, I don't know, they're, they're pretty forward thinking, I guess, just to, just to be blunt. So um, yes, hopefully, I... hopefully we can continue to study that in the future. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, I was, I was just going to jump in just in terms of documenting obligations. So on the commercial side, um, we're committed to building uh, lead platinum for all the buildings. Um, and on the residential side, Lend Lease will be building to Greenpoint rated 120 points plus, which is the residential equivalent to lead platinum. Um, and then I would just say the city's own reach code um, and Title 24 are probably the most uh, far reaching pardon the puns, um, in terms of, you know, leading um, at the, you know, sustainability and building systems uh, from energy performance standpoint. And then as Jeff mentioned, all the elements of the master plan, um, the housing, the affordable housing that's integrated within the complete neighborhood. So everything that we're doing from a parks and open space standpoint in the tree canopy will be um, equitably shared amongst all residents. Sounds good. Um, then I'll just kind of bring it home in terms of this round of comment for myself. Um, in terms of the low lighting, um, limiting light pollution, I'm very supportive of that. Um, I'm also very supportive of Commissioner Dempsey and Commissioner Hemmeyer's recommendation for a very robust connection for bicycling between the Stevens Creek trails and making sure that that green loop is very accessible from that. Um, I very much am also supportive of Chair Cranston's uh, you know, desire to see some of that uh, phasing, the earlier phasing, being able to deliver more of the housing. Um, and then one thought or proposal for anyone else to consider um, is, you know, I would like to make sure that um, it is stated somewhere that um, the technologies for uh, having very climate resilient building are, are just documented somewhere. Um, and yeah, want to make sure that people can can actually live there. For the climate that we have in the future so those are my comments thank you uh, commissioner dempsey so um in my earlier comments i i neglected to say one thing um yeah as we're giving feedback and and the truth is it's the most important piece of feedback which is i am really excited about this plan there's so much in this plan that i like uh when i i sat down with with google earlier to to, to hear about the project um, you know, I, I could have talked to them for two hours because as they went through and they, they walked me through all the pieces, I kept seeing all these little thoughtful flourishes that um, 
I was like, oh, I never, that never even occurred to me, right? And it and it really brought home to me how how thoughtful and considerate I think this process was. I know God knows it was a long process, um, but I, and, and it's very easy in these contexts to to find things to quibble with, and there's always something that we could change. But the the most important message I think that at least I individually have is that I'm really excited about this, and I I just wish it wasn't going to take so long because the truth is I want to go and hang out there. So anyway, I just thought it was important to kind of end by saying that there's so much right with this. Um, that I'm, I'm really pretty impressed and excited about the work that's been done. Yeah. So I think we've got everybody on this first question. Um, the second question from the staff was, does the EPC support this pose, the su support of the framework for tree removal and replacement necessary for implementation of the master plan consistent with the precise plan visions? Um, Dempsey, you still have your hand up. What do you think? Okay. Um, Christine, you're my Happy to kick us off again. I mean, I, I think a redevelopment of the scale, unfortunately, does have real implications for the existing canopy. And um, we know from earlier projects that the state of the canopy is not great. Um, I, I think the, the prioritization of preserving where we can, transplanting, um, and then, and really, um, I, I appreciate that what Google's approach to um, building, or sorry, excuse me, to planting um, trees now so that when they are, when the replacement does happen, they're, they're more mature. But um, I'm thinking of Commissioner Lowe, who I, I care so deeply about this issue, and, and it is heartbreaking to know that a lot of the existing trees that, that do define that area um, will not be where they are, but um, I think it, it is in service of, of a greater um, vision for um, the understory for um, greater canopy and, and just overall um, improvements to, to North Bay Shore. So I, I, I appreciate this approach by staff and, and trust that the applicant will be working as, as diligently as possible to preserve um, what does exist and, and can be retained in a healthy way. Uh, Commissioner Capillas. Um, I, I know that uh, Google has given thought about this and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but Jeff indicated to me when I met with them that they actually have a tree grove that they are growing down uh, south south of us in Gilroy, where it, they are really uh, growing trees. So they will be right. more mature when they do uh, replace the trees. So they're not going to be just little teeny okay, tiny about it. shrubs. So they have thought about that. And I think that that's, you know, just really um, acknowledges what Commissioner Dempsey says. They have taken the time to understand that we don't want to take take down these larger trees. Uh, if, if they are in ill health, then that's one thing, but to replace them with uh, more mature trees and and really incorporate that into the overall plan is another another indication of the types of detail that Google has gone into. So jump in, Jeff, if I have missed, uh, misquoted you, but it was my understanding that you had already started uh, looking at that and trying to make sure we got more matures replacing the trees that were going down. That, uh, thank you for that comment. That, that you're exactly correct. So yeah, so we are growing trees uh, down south already. Um, some of those are already being reboxed because they're they're growing out of their first boxes. So that's really encouraging. So when the trees go in, not only will the trunks be bigger, they'll be taller. The actual canopy will be bigger as well. Um, and these are the the sustainable and native trees. That we, that we are looking, and we've been talking to the city for years about that plant palette. Um, so this will be, you know, those trees um, that we'll get to see here. I think the other really important piece of the tree story is that with the phasing of the development, 
means that the trees come out in phases as well. So they come out in small little increments and then they get replaced in those same increments um, as opposed to, you know, there's no, we're not clear cutting North Bay Shore on day one. There's no need for that. So uh, trees will come down, construction goes up, trees go back up and, you know, we move forward to the next phase. So. Okay, Commissioner uh, Dempsey. Just a quick question for Jeff. I, I had asked about, you know, the, the there's a number of trees that are not doing well. Um, and I had asked sort of about their prognosis and, and Jeff, I'm, I'm probably going to butcher this, but you had said, given the effort that the area is going to make to use recycled, uh, recycled water, gray water, which is, you know, far more environmentally conscious, it does not bode well for the health of a bunch of those non-native trees. Um, if you could maybe spend 60 seconds talking about that, I thought that was actually important and compelling um, because, you know, it breaks my heart to cut down, you know, to see redwoods cut down. But if they're not going to make it where they are because redwoods don't grow on the shore, that that's, you know, it's unfortunate but necessary. Yeah, again, thank you. Another good comment. You're exactly correct. So the, the recycled water that comes from the Palo Alto plant is unfortunately compromised and getting leached by the seawater. So it comes into North Bay shore too salty for the redwoods to survive. So there's too much salt content in it. Um, so that's why a lot of the redwoods are dying once the water gets shifted to the recycled water, which is also what the city wants. Um, so part of our district system effort, something that we're studying as a potential is to take that, uh, recycled water and blend it with our gray water so that we can then use it as the irrigation for, for the for the new trees coming in um, which will make them just that much healthier overall but you're exactly correct the redwoods are just they're not native and they and they really can't remain with the street transformation that happens as well so when we start adding bike lanes wider sidewalks and and you want the you know pedestrian experience to be correct the redwoods don't match that, but they can they can hopefully remain in part of the parks as long as they can. Yeah. Uh, any other? Okay, Commissioner Ian. Uh, yes, the first time I saw the presentation, and when you just see that final number of how many trees are getting cut, it's it's a little shocking. Um, but uh, as everyone had said that. Um, it was broken down and explained to me in a way that made me feel a little less, um, I guess, heartbroken is what everybody else is saying. Uh, but and, and it's understandable that if you're going to put down a ton of new buildings and a ton of new streets, that some old trees are going to have to have to go. But I, I was encouraged to hear Jeff say, um, and maybe you could talk a little bit about this. Um, you guys are sort of noting where the high quality trees that can sustain the climate are going to be and will take every effort to try to maintain those or transplant them. Um, I know we have a large amount of open space. Um, I'm going to put my plug in for true urban forest. And if there are trees that are appropriate to this type of geographic area and um, you know marshy climate, that we we aim for, you know, variation in our open spaces, and perhaps we have a true forest somewhere uh, to try to make up for a lot of the larger trees that are getting cut down because street trees just aren't going to be as large as trees that can grow in open space and have a larger root root uh, system. Yeah, again, you're you're correct. Um, you know, I'm not going to be the expert on on how to go about creating an urban forest by any means. I think we rely on on some really smart consultants, HT Harvey, for example, and some others that are um, SFEI and, and some others that are doing this for a living and have studied this mm -hmm. this in particular. So we rely on them to guide us in this re in this regard. I think it is you know replant or transplanting trees can be an expensive endeavor so i think we'll have to do some more look at that um but then it is um you know really about creating that urban forest that is more biodiverse um than exists today out there so that's our great that's our first goal for sure oh, 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and I thank you for that. And I, I would uh, maybe suggest that as you get more information about the phasing and what trees come in and out, that, uh, you know, as this process has shown, some of the groups that you've been working with, the community groups like the Sierra Club and Audubon Society, they've been helpful in educating, in a sense, along with the consultants, they will, their professionals, they can help guide what to do. And if you can retain that relationship and be open with, you know, the detailed information that you get as you get it, I think it can only help the project. Thanks. Um, Commissioner Nunez, any comments on this question? Um, not really. I'm just generally supportive of everyone else's comments. Um, it is a shame that the some of these trees are not uh, going to be able to make it. Um, it actually makes me wonder about the viability of the remaining trees. Um, but you know, I, yeah, not too many uh, comments on on this item. And I guess that's my only comment was I I love the idea of the tree farm. Um, I'd hate to see the tree farm go away in ten years and then we don't get as mature trees later. So uh, my only comment would be in the framework is that. That, uh, that somehow we, you know, the the work that's already been done um, is something that we can do during during the life of the process, so that um, that we are getting the more mature trees as they as, as mature as we can when they're put in um, is a great thing, and I'd love to see that preserved. So, uh, so then we move on to the third question, which is the. Support for the development, streamlining the development review process. Um, comments from commissioners? Okay. I'll just say I, I'm supportive of the process, uh, of, the, of the streamlined process. It, it would make sense to me, um, given, you know, since we'll have a, an overall uh, development agreement in place in the master plan, um, I'm supportive of the of using the streamlined process in order to try to keep everything moving as quickly as we can. So, uh, Commissioner Hammer. Yes, I'd echo that. I think the one piece um, that didn't quite convince me is that the, there's the same level of input at design review, and I just don't know that to be true. So I, I applaud Google for um, and a robust community engagement strategy, and I just like to see that continue as opposed to believing that there are a lot of people who are going to show up on a Tuesday afternoon or whenever it is um, to, to give specific feedback as these are going through to staff if, if that arises. But I'm supportive of the streamlined development process. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Krolis. Uh, you're on mute, Commissioner Gabones. Yes, I was on mute. I apologize. Um, I th I think the streamlined uh, development review process is good because everybody wants to move this forward really quick. But by the same token, I think before we get to that that point, we would have the opportunity for you know additional input. There's so many people that. Uh, are really a part of this process. And I know, uh, you know, given tonight's uh, uh, input from the public, I, you know, want to make sure that there's an opportunity to continue that dialogue because this is such an important project and one that is going to be a really a model and example of what we want to see done you know, throughout the city. And I think it is an opportunity to make sure that people have had that opportunity. So um, I, I support that, but making sure that along the way, when we get to that point, we have had, you know, enough of the public opportunity to give us that input and not overstep that, that particular part of the process. Uh, Commissioner Ian. Um, I really want to be supportive of the streamlined development review process. I think as Google has moved in this process, uh, you're gaining our trust that you, you do the outreach, that your goals are in line with what's in the precise plan. And, and I feel that 
you know, I'm so close. I just, I did want to hear what everyone else had to say. My concern lies in this long uh, process. It's, it's long. And so you're going to get a whole crop of new people that are going to be the public and that haven't been a part of the conversation so far. And I just want to make sure that they have a say in what happens in their neighborhood. Um, you know, I just, that, that, that's my big hesitancy. It's that there's not enough opportunity for the public. And because it's such a long process to streamline every project that goes through, then sort of takes away opportunity for the public to provide input. And this is future public, not the public that has been already providing input. You know what I mean? So I don't know what to say about that. I, I'm so borderline on this. Um, I just wanted to state my hesitancy and why. Mr. Dempsey? Yeah, I'm, I, I think I'm much of the same mind as Commissioner Yin. This is actually a hard one for me um, because I generally think that streamlining and you know, compressing the, the period of time where people have to chase paperwork to, to do something should be short. I think that that's generally a really good thing. But 30 years is a long time, right? Like, you go 30 years back, that's 1991. And, you know, Mountain View was very different. The needs we had were very different. The tech industry was very different. Um, you know, if it had been, you know, if we were talking about 10 years, I don't know that I would have even blinked an eye. And maybe even 20 years, I'd be like, yeah, I can see it. But I guess I don't know what precedent there is. And, and maybe at some point I'd be very curious to know from staff, or maybe you can be work this into the report to council, like what sort of precedent is there for, you know, 30 year entitlement as opposed to a, you know, a 20 or a 15 or a 25. Um, because I think precedent would might make me comfortable if, if this has been done elsewhere or at other times. And, but if it's never been done ever, I think it might deserve a little more scrutiny. Um, we, if I may, we don't have any precedent of a 30 year entitlement period uh, with the DA, but I would certainly like to say a few things because I heard it from a few commissioners. Um, the process that is being proposed in the streamline review has DRC review and a public hearing at the ZA level. Depending upon the scale and the size of development, community outreach is done for individual projects, which is, you know, com individual community meetings on specific development proposal itself. And that will still be part of the process. Um, it's just that, you know, the final approval will be at the ZA public hearing process. So there'll be like at least a couple of public hearings for community input in addition to community outreach meetings as well. And then coming back to Commissioner Dempsey's question on precedents, we don't have any precedents, but I just want to bring in a comparison. Um, EPC reviewed the um, proposal on Google's Middlefield Park, um, um, you know, earlier this year. That project is requesting a 20, is considering 20 year DA for that development. Google North Bayshore is three times bigger than Middlefield Park. And uh, Google is um, proposing 30 year uh, development agreement just for comparison points uh, for commissioners to uh, uh, consider. Thank you for clarifying that piece about the public the community outreach in addition to the ZA public hearing. Commissioner Nunez. My hand. Uh, yeah, in in principle, I, I definitely am supportive of the streamlined process proposal. Um, but I go back to you know exactly what is getting streamlined and when. And to me, you know, I'll I'll just iterate that that's why this um 30 year development agreement, I I just would like to see a lot more clarity in terms of you know, deliverable dates. Um, I don't think that uh, anyone wants to just kind of sit on the land and not do anything until year 29. That's not what I think. Um, but I do think that having more clarity around the expectations um, for when these 
community services or facilities, um, you know, parks, whatever it is, when these things will be made available to the public. Um, I, I would love to, you know, streamline that thing that was then clear. Um, but I also go back to, uh, you know, I, I feel very strongly that um, right now the housing is going to be what's important. So um, I would love to stream, I would love to support this. Um, I, I really want uh, to see the housing uh, be prioritized in, or, you know, in, in the first four to five phases. Um, but again, I am supportive of streamlined development in principle. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think through that. Um, so Diana, Stephanie, the questions you proposed, do you feel you have good input? Yep. yep. I think we've got good input. Thank you. Okay. Um, so with that, we will move on to item six, which is staff commission announcements, updates, requests. Um, so thanks, thanks Google. Uh, so uh, we don't have Eric. Uh, I guess Stephanie, you're kind of playing Eric today. Are there any? Uh, do we the schedule upcoming upcoming meetings um, plans? Yeah. So I believe you have um, two more meetings before the the close of the year. Um, with some development proposals um, scheduled. The next one, I believe, um, includes the uh, Merlone Geyer Phase 3 um, office development at the San Antonio Shopping Center. And then the following last meeting um, it would include the 555 West Middlefield um, proposed development, as well as the um, EPC calendar for next year. Any other announcements from commissioners or staff? Yeah, Eric actually wanted or wanted me to go over some other um, items. Uh, he noted that he's still setting up the EPC holiday party. So he sent an email over and just want to remind commissioners to um, book the date that they prefer. Um, second, EPC interviews were held recently and the council has indicated that they re will reappoint Commissioner Yin. So congrats, um, and congrats to Alex Muniz. He was also appointed. And they will also appoint Chris Clark, and he's going to start sometime in January. Um, and lastly, the, uh, Eric said to also wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving holiday. Sure. All right, no other announcements. Um, then we will adjourn the meeting at 9.34 p.m. And the next regularly scheduled EPC meeting will be held on December 1st, 2021. Thank you, everyone. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Bye, everybody. Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye. Bye.